Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 17. In this tutorial we're going to carry on where we left off last time and add the functionality into our script which allows us to come out of our menu so we can subsequently go back into it and out of it whenever we want. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now, the script is very basic and it just lets us into the menu good and well, nice and easy, in straight away. Uh, this exit button up here is another story and we will get round to that. For now we just want to be able to use our escape button to get in and out of the menu whenever we would like. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create basically another coroutine which functions fairly similar and we're also going to create another if statement inside our original um, update method. And the reason for this is because we need it to recognize that it is doing one thing or the other. So if we head into our inventory script that we created the last tutorial, there are just a couple of things that we are going to have to add to this. So if you remember, we brought in two sound effects. One was to open the menu, one was to close the menu. So let's add in that as an extra variable. So public and audio source. And we can call this one inventory close semicolon and we're going to carry on going through this um, just to kind of illustrate why we need to add a couple of extra things to this script. Um, so firstly let's actually get some scripting in place so we can basically close our menu and we can use this if statement pretty much as it is with just a couple of modifications. So at the moment this is saying if we press cancel and is open is equal to false then we can indeed open the inventory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have if in brackets input dot get button down same as above cancel because we still want the same button to function the same. We don't want to have to press um, the escape button to get into it and the U button to get out of it. We want the same button to do the same things here. So ampersand two of them and we say is open equals true close bracket and open curly bracket and hit return. So the reason we're doing this is because in this section here we do state it as true which means that this now here will function as well and whatever we put here we'll be able to press or we'll be able to run if we press cancel and is open is true. What do we want to put here? Well firstly we need to put is open equals false because we need it to do the inverse once we've closed the menu so it kind of it somewhat loops around on itself, uh, but only when we press the escape key. Uh, but you'll see a bit of a loop going on um, when we test this first time, and then we'll be able to kind of fix it and explain why that happens at the end of the tutorial. So the next thing we need to do is say inventory close dot, if we go on to the next line, I should have said, dot play, open close bracket and a semicolon. Uh, next we're going to say inventory fade uh, because we want that fading. Remember that kind of uh, fades in and out or out and in depending on which way you want to look at it. But it's all in one animation so we don't need to create a separate one. So we still want that to play. So set active true for the semicolon. Now at this point we need to create another coroutine. That coroutine is going to be to close. It's going to be very very similar to uh, the open. In fact it's going to be identical as we start this but you'll see where the change comes in a little later on and we could do this a number of different ways. Uh, I guess it just depends on how you want to do it. Uh, you know there are always ways to refine it and like, I'll explain one refinement a little later on. Uh, so here let's put start coroutine and in brackets the name for coroutine we're going to call it inv close. Open close bracket close bracket semicolon and it has decided it's going to auto correct there. So I'm just going to make sure that that there we go. So next what we do is let's type I enumerator and I can't remember if I mentioned it last tutorial. Um, just be careful when you're doing coroutines. If you allow it to auto uh, fill 
it may jump to I enumerable. And obviously, I enumerable and I enumerator are two separate things. So if you get a problem, it could be that. So just check that and make sure you do go for I enumerator. Uh, the name is INV close, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And let's take these four lines of code, place them inside our close coroutine and save the script. So, like I said, it's a bit odd in some ways that these two coroutines are the same, uh, but you'll see why we do have two different coroutines a later on, and you'll see why we could actually refine it back into one uh, as we go through the script. Um, so let's follow this logically. So in our update method, we're saying if we press cancel and the menu isn't open, then we open it. If we press cancel and the menu is open, then we close it. Now, logically, this should all work, but watch what happens when we try this out. Firstly, let's add some variables to our script because we've got the inventory closed to add right there. Uh, let's press play and let's see what happens, shall we? Now, do you recognize that? It doesn't close. We have the same issue we had last tutorial where it was repeatedly looping itself. So there are ways of getting out of that loop. Um, basically, we can add some extra uh, wait time and add an extra boolean that says, hang on, we're trying to do something, stop doing everything else. And the way we can do that is if we have here public bool, and we'll call this one, I'll just call it can close. Uh, by default, it will, will be false. Uh, so what this is basically saying is, can we close the inventory? So we can only close it if it's open. So in the first if statement here, we need to say if input is cancel and is open is false and can close is also equal to false. Now, what happens here is we basically set the can close to uh, true a little later on in the script. How far later on? Well, it's near the end of this functionality. So here we've got start coroutine in open. At the very end of that coroutine, let's put yield return new wait for seconds. And in brackets, 0 0.5, just as something rather small, with an F. And let's also uh, just put the semicolon. And I'm thinking now, best thing for us to do is if we place down below, um, what I forgot what we've called the actual thing, it's can close. Oops. There we go. Nope, still not can close uh, equals true with a semicolon. So what this is doing now is that it's stopping this from functioning at all once we've done it the once. So logic would dictate on this if statement, we put double ampersand and put can close equals true. Now, at this point, this is saying that, yeah, okay, we've set it on as true here. That means that we can then run this, but we can't run this. That essentially stops the infinite loop. That means down here, we can use these two lines of code that we've just typed and place them here. And instead of can close being true, we have it as false and save. So you can see why we do have two different coroutines right now. Uh, but like I say, we refine it and change it to one um, in a couple of minutes. But let's make sure that this works as is. So let's head into Unity. Let's press play. And let's try it out. Right. So we can see basically what's happened here is that these cannot be identical. Now, logically, they, I guess they could be to some degree, but there are two things which are a little bit different here. So we're saying that the inventory screen is true on both, and that's where we fall over. So there are now two differences between both of those coroutines, but you can still combine them, and don't, don't worry, we'll do that. Uh, so let's resave that, head back into Unity, press play, 
and let's make sure this works perfectly. So, in, yep, and back to the game. In, back to game. In, and back to game. So, how can we refine this a little more so we only have one coroutine? Well, we have used if statements up here, so that means that we can use if statements down here. So, let's follow this in an orderly fashion and let's change inv open to inv control. Now, both of these should underline if we get rid of this down here. And what we're going to do is add two if statements to here. And these if statements are going to be based on what we're actually doing. So in the case of the inventory screen coming on, we need to say if is open equals true, then we do this line of code. So open curly bracket, go below that section there and put the close curly bracket. Next, we put else with an open curly bracket, copy that line of code, place it here and change it to false. Once again, down here, we can use the same if statement for the can close. Now we can't place this up here because basically the can close is the little bit of time that it gives us for the game to catch up in little air markers there. Um, so if we have the same if statement below, but with those lines of code taken out and replaced with this one. So I'm going to cut that, paste it, and I'm going to paste it again there and change it to false. And now we just have one coroutine. So what we need to do is change the reference to it here. So inv control and inv control, if I can actually spell that correctly, and save. So instead of having two uh, coroutines, we just have the one, and that one coroutine checks whether we are in the inventory or not and does its things accordingly. So if we head back into Unity, press play, and let's check out our inventory. Excellent. Perfect, so the inventory works as intended. Now we can get in and out, no problem. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're actually going to deal with time itself. Um, I did kind of want to go through it this tutorial, but I want to go into it a bit more extensively because I want to try and get you guys to understand, and, you know, take the time to make, help you understand how that's going to function uh, when we freeze time. And I think we'll also get that exit button working as well. Um, because we want to be able to either press escape or maybe click that exit button. So those two things are coming up in the next tutorial. Until then, guys, thank you very much for watching.